They dot our highways, cover our cop cars, and even grace our manhole covers. In Portland, roses are everywhere. They do so well here, they're beautiful, and they are all of the city. You can't drive down a street hardly where almost every other home doesn't have roses growing in the yard. Though the city's had a slew of nicknames over the years, officially, Portland is the city of roses. But how did Portland become the Rose City? In the late 1800s, really who got it all started was Georgiana Pittock and her love for roses. Georgiana Pittock and her husband Henry were self-made millionaires and he owned the Oregonian newspaper. Today, their former mansion is one of the top tourist attractions in the city. Georgiana established the Portland Rose Society in 1889. It was the first of its kind in the country. There was no American Rose Society. It's all started here. Georgiana discovered what generations of Portland gardeners now know. The Willamette Valley's cool spring nights and temperate winters are an ideal climate for producing massive rose blooms. By the late 1800s, cultivating new rose varieties was all the rage. And in 1905, Portland hosted the Lewis and Clark Exposition, celebrating the 100th anniversary of Lewis and Clark's exploration of the American West. The fair attracted more than a million and a half visitors. And to prepare? Tens of thousands of roses were planted all through Portland, really sealing our identity as the Rose City. Thousands and thousands of this light pink Madame Caroline Testu rose were the ones that were planted here, 50,000 of them in Portland, and you can still see some of them today. The exposition was so popular, Mayor Harry Lane proposed an annual festival of roses. The first rose festival was held in 1907. It was now clear that roses could be an economic asset for the city. In order to spread word of Portland's lovely roses and other amenities, the Royal Rosarians Fraternal Organization was formed in 1912. The Royal Rosarians are the official greeters and ambassadors of goodwill for the city of Portland by decree of the mayor. The only change to our uniform over the year is the red tie. When color TV was invented, it went from a white tie to a red tie because we looked better on TV. <laughs> Spectacular. Since 1938, the Royal Rosarians have hosted a home rose garden contest as part of the Rose Festival. Teams of two to three to four rose judges go out and see people's gardens and judge them for all sorts of attributes, but mainly are they visible from the street? Are they blooming wonderfully, disease resistant, being well taken care of? Mostly it's uh, encouraging the growth of the rose. The International Rose Test Garden was established in 1917. It served as a safe haven for the rose hybrids at risk in Europe during the Great War. We have companies from around the world that send their roses here to be tested. So we're looking for disease resistance. Is it a nice, full, vigorous plant? It's here that the winners of the Royal Rosarian Garden Contest are announced. Today, Georgiana Pittock's legacy lives on. The Rose Society's annual Spring Rose Show is the country's largest. Cemetery is very important. And if you go to rose shows, you'll see people sticking things into their flowers, trying to get the petals arranged more symmetrical than they may have been in nature. Very important when a person views something, if they see symmetry, it's the first step in beauty. People visit here to see our roses. You can go any day up to Washington Park and be in, I think, one of the absolute most beautiful rose gardens in the world. But I, I don't think a lot of people realize how important roses are to the city of Portland, even though we're called that. And they would probably give it much more respect if they really realized what it adds across the country to the fame of Portland.